my uh, purpose today is just to give you sort of a general overview of um, the uh, the technology integration matrix, some of the underlying concepts. But I am very happy to um, go in whatever direction is most helpful to the people who are here in attendance. So if you have any um, different thoughts or different uh, directions you'd like me to, to go, things that you'd like me to address, if you're familiar with the basic concepts, but you have something specific that you'd like to talk about, I am very happy to go in that direction. So go ahead and unmute yourself and ask a question. I can't see um, the way my screens are set up while I'm presenting. I can't see the uh, the chat area, um, but I trust that um, uh, someone on the FCIT side will uh, will unmute and let me know if we have a question um, or something that we need to uh, address. Um, so the the technology integration matrix um, was created to address the problem of of uh, needing a common language um, when describing uh, technology integration. Um, basically, you, you can ask 10 different people what they mean by uh, a technology infused lesson or, or effective technology integration, and you'll get 10 different answers. And so what we sought to do with the TIM is try and identify a, a theoretical base, a research base, and that we can practically apply in classrooms that would move the conversation away from um, uh, sort of boxes and wires and the, the technology of it and, and toward things that are more meaningful about technology integration, things that um, are basic to teaching and learning um, rather than things that are, are specific to a, a particular software or hardware. Um, so the, the team that created the TIM um, looked at uh, a lot of different uh, research about effective teaching and learning and effective technology integration. Um, and the, the elements that they identified um, as a sort of one set of concepts, attributes of learning environments or attributes of meaningful learning or attributes of effective teaching and learning. Um, and those areas which are each Areas that are research-based and, and very well supported in the literature are active, collaborative, constructive, authentic, and goal-directed. Um, and we contrasted those, those lenses for uh, thinking about technology integration with five levels of technology integration. Those levels are uh, entry, adoption, adaptation, fusion, and transformation. The terminology is mostly originally from the ACOT studies, but it has a lot of DNA in common with other kinds of um, levels of technology integration um, schemes uh, or uh, uh, frameworks. Um, so within the TIM, those characteristics of meaningful learning environments are contrasted with those levels of technology integration. Now, all of this is based on prior research, but bringing them together in this form um, really created something new. And uh, the research that we've done in the years since the initial creation of the TIM has really established these concepts as specific to the TIM. So now when we talk about the levels, we're not talking about the same thing that they were talking about in the ACOT studies. Um, although the theoretical underpinnings are there, um, we've defined them significantly within our work with the TIM. Um, those five characteristics, uh, active learning, collaborative learning, uh, constructive learning, authentic learning and goal-directed learning get at things that we know are important in, in teaching and learning. Actively engaging kids, having meaningful collaboration, supporting constructivist learning principles, um, and incorporating activities that have real application in students' lives, and helping students um, uh, set a purpose for their learning, reflect on their learning. So these are not an exhaustive list of everything that's important in teaching and learning. Um, but they are a, uh, a list of foundational things that you'll see um, uh, in, in, a, in a robust body of research are important in, in teaching and learning. These give us a basis for asking questions about the technology integration so that it's not just sort of how does this hardware work or how am I supposed to use the software, um, but instead um, the technology that I'm using here, in what ways does it allow me to make learning more authentic or in what ways does it make me uh, does allow me to uh, help students develop goals for their own learning 
monitor their progress toward those goals, reflect on their learning. Um, likewise, each of these are lenses that can lead to great conversations with teachers about how to, how to incorporate technology in meaningful ways uh, that impact learning. Um, and that's, that's really um, one of the core applications of the TIM is to support those great conversations between teachers and among uh, educators at all levels about what, uh, what meaningful learning can look like with technology. Um, those five levels within the TIM are contrasted with five, uh, sorry, those five characteristics are contrasted with five levels. Um, the levels in general terms, uh, an entry level lesson on the TIM means that the teacher is the only one using technology uh, in that lesson or perhaps uh, students are using it for sort of drill and practice software or something like that. Um, but it, it is very teacher-centered, teacher-directed, um, and, and in a lot of cases, only the teacher is using the technology. The adoption level, um, at the adoption level, kids are definitely using the technology hands-on, um, but it's at the direction and discretion of the teacher. The teacher is deciding which technologies when to use them, how to use them to support learning. Um, uh, adoption definitely gets hands-on, but again, it's very teacher uh, directed. The adaptation level is a really important inflection point. Um, at the adaptation level, you start to see lessons where um, the teacher has incorporated um, the ability for students to choose between one or more, uh, sorry, two or more uh, technologies. So um, perhaps the, the task is laid out and the, the students are able to use um, one tool or another to complete that task at their discretion. Um, or lessons where um, there is time built into that lesson for students to explore um, with that technology tool um, on their own uh, to learn more about uh, how, how it works and how it, how it makes sense to them applying it to their own learning. So at the adaptation level, you're starting to release some of that control to students and you're asking them to think about how they learn and think about which technologies best support that learning and the ways in which technologies support learning. Um, so it's, it's that inflection point where you really start to get some, uh, you really start to kick learning up to another level. Um, at the infusion level, multiple technologies are available commonly to, to students, and students can um, incorporate those um, uh, at their discretion. Uh, they have meaningful access to different technology tools and can bring them in when they feel it supports their learning. Um, and a, a transformation level lesson uh, is one in which um, students have meaningful access to multiple tools, can bring them in whenever they want to, and you're and you have an environment that is supporting um, sort of the level of creativity and collaboration where things are happening that would not be possible um, without the technology tools uh, that you're incorporating. Um, so those five levels and those five characteristics um, give us the, the basis for the TIM. Um, and I'll just talk briefly about um, some of the uh, some of the underlying characteristics that we that we see um, across those levels. First of all, we're seeing a shift um, from, and this is probably the most important, a shift from in an entry level lesson, you're talking about something that is very teacher driven. Uh, the teacher has the ownership of learning and a typical transformation level lesson, students have much greater agency and involvement uh, in how that lesson is proceeding. Um, a, a typical entry level lesson is um, much more likely to be focused on procedural understandings of the content, um, where a transformation level lesson is more likely to be um, focusing on big concepts uh, rather than sort of step-by-step -step procedures. Um, you're also seeing uh, a shift as you move toward the right toward uh, more complex and unconventional use of technology tools. Um, and that, again, is getting to that creative, dynamic classroom environment where the kids are empowered to make choices about what technology is being brought in. Um, and then finally, we see a shift in the instructional focus. Usually in an entry level lesson, a significant part of the lesson is gonna be about what tools we're using and how to use them, um, where uh, a, uh, a transformation level lesson 
is much more likely to not reference the technology tools at all and only talk about the learning that's that's going on. Um, and it's just sort of a consequence of where you're at uh, on the kind of lesson that you're doing. I want to emphasize that um, within the matrix, there's not a bad area to be or a good area to be. The matrix is a, a system for describing what you're seeing in the classroom. Um, and so um, sometimes our, our basic uh, uh, argument would be that um, it's not good or bad for the teacher to be working at any particular level. It's good for the teacher to know what level of technology integration he or she is using and to use it intentionally as a response to student needs and curriculum demands um, rather than technology for technology's sake. Um, it, it doesn't, um, the thing that makes the difference is the pedagogy. And so we really try to put the emphasis on the pedagogy in, at all places. If I do a classroom observation and I'm looking at, you know, maybe it's entry and adoption across the board, I would begin the conversation by describing back to the teacher what I saw in the lesson, how I understand that matching up with the matrix, and then talk about um, uh, the choices that the teacher made uh, getting there. And, and, you know, because that might be the levels that we saw in that lesson might be exactly what's appropriate for the pedagogical needs of the students that day. Um, and, and so really what we're looking for is to empower teachers to use technology in strategic ways that support what they know is good, um, ped good pedagogy, uh, good content knowledge. It's really driven from the teacher's understanding of, of teaching and learning um, and not from the technology side of it, which also takes the pressure off the teacher to feel like he or she needs to know everything there is to know about uh, all of the technologies that they're using in their classroom. You know, of course, we support the idea of giving teachers as much professional development um, as, as possible um, so that they, they feel well prepared for, for what they're doing. But we also think it's important for teachers to be comfortable enough with the technology that they're using in their classroom that they don't have to be the expert in that technology. They have expertise in pedagogy. They have expertise in content. Um, and the technology is just a tool. And so sort of take some of the pressure off and, and allow the teacher to sort of share some of that um, uh, control and, and um, uh, agency with the students in the classroom. Um, so um, those are some of the basic uh, building blocks of the TIM uh, as a way of thinking about technology integration in the classroom. There are lots of other aspects of it that we can talk about, but um, that was just a, our, my brief presentation on some of the sort of the underlying concepts um, uh, for the TIM. I'm happy to answer questions or go in more depth on any of the, any of the things that we've talked about here or anything else.